Hi, I'm Wes Unruh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book that I wrote with author Edward Wilson. Now, Edward Wilson knows his shit. What I mean by that is that if you look at uh, his blog, which is at fenris23.wordpress.com, and it's linked to off the art of memetics.com, it's going to make your head spin. It, 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 he talks about a lot of uh, sort of high concept ideas, and in our book that we wrote together, I took a lot of the work that he was doing uh, at essentially the academic level, talking about computer information systems and uh, uh, cybernetic theory and you know philosophical ideas and um, theoretical concepts, and we boiled all of that down into this book, which we hope is much more accessible than the sort of academic theory at which we've been working. So in other words, this is a theory made practical. You know, or we were going to originally, originally we were going to call this the medics in theory and practice. That actually ended up being very similar to the title of our first section, part one, the medics in theory and practice. The actual second section is called navigating the medic networks. Now, the trope, you know, the basic idea, the, the sort of um, the gestalt of all of this, if you will, is that we are all embedded in a giant mimetic network. The, uh, the whole, uh, everything which uh, conveys meaning is part of the mimetic network, which means the internet. Um, you've got people now talking about teams, which are technology-enabled mimetic structures that uh, themselves retain information and are just using us as kind of a Terminator sort of scenario with Skynet, where um, humanity is only around as long as it continues to serve the mimetic structures of technology as they further themselves. Um, a lot of science fiction is essentially a dramatization of some of these theories in some ways. What we talk about in this book, though, are uh, what we start off the book with are five vocabulary words, if you will, which we define so that you're able to follow through the book and uh, understand what's going on. Now, those five words is what I've been doing these videos about. Those five words are, um, it's right here at chapter one, we talk about each one of these magic, memetics, mastermind groups, well, that's two words, maybe three, but let me slide out. We talk about egregors and cybernetics, and now today I'm talking about egregors. Egregors are, they're a concept that's taken uh, from religion and from metaphysics. And that concept is that an organization or a time or a, a space can have a metaphorical construct attached to it which sort of guides it. Now, that seems pretty, I know that I'm not being very definite yet. Let me explain. Now, if you look at the United States, we have two egregors that sort of encompass um, the culture of the United States. Those two egregors are uh, Uncle Sam and the goddess Columbia. Not a lot of people are aware of the goddess Columbia. You can Google it. Um, a friend of mine did a documentary about it. The goddess Columbia, the, the initial theme song of the United States was O Columbia. This land was uh, pictured as um, a female goddess uh, of fertility and uh, lots of uh, uh, fecundity, if you will. Whereas Uncle Sam sort of represents the institutionalized, um, gentle, good, old-fashioned, patriotic face of, uh, of the government. Um, now, Uncle Sam has gotten a lot more play than uh, the goddess Columbia. I mean, he's, fuck, he's even got his own comic book. So the Uncle Sam is probably a healthier egregor at this point, whereas the goddess Columbia has kind of been relegated to the back alley. Uh, we see her on tops of all the Capitol buildings, but we don't talk about her. So those are two sort of embodiments of egregors. If you look at uh, Disney, then you see Mickey Mouse is the embodiment of you know the Disney corporate structure. And then, in fact, you will see Mickey Mouse in some way, in some icon, iconic way, influencing every part of uh, Disney. Now, of course, you know, when you think of McDonald's, you're thinking of Ronald McDonald. That is also an egregor for an institution. That, or the Joker from Batman, you know, that's an egregor. We actually use um, examples using that. 
uh, using Batman and the Joker and asking, you know, where is it that the Joker lives and is it a living force? So, egregors are the spiritual force of a collective mind being projected against the background of a culture. Is it real? Is it false? Is it true? You know, th this is a point where we're becoming, we're moving beyond um, physical constructs that we're labeling and we're talking about abstracts. So it is both true and false, and in some sense meaningless. Now, that's where we're at with the Gregors, but we needed that term so that we are able to reflect the rest of the concepts of the book in such a way that they become useful. Uh, we've used these terms because they enable the technology that we're presenting in this book. So, that was the fourth of the five videos that I'm doing on vocabulary words for The Art of Memetics. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, check out the book. You can definitely find it for free. Just uh, do a little bit of searching, and uh, then let us know what you think.